Hey guys, I am Daisho and I am here bringing you some Hearthstone and today we are playing this terrible awful deck that I constructed by f forcing myself if there was a class card to take said class card. I was able to have some choice over it when there are multiple class cards in a pack and when there were no class cards in a pack I just took whatever I wanted but overall the deck ended up pretty bad Unfortunately, they gave me a lot of Eye for an Eyes, a Repentance, uh, a couple of Hands of Protection, a couple of Blessing of Wisdom, so there's a lot of pretty bad cards in this deck, and the curve is nearly non-existent. I have, like, no two drops, and I've found myself in a position where I kind of want to keep Chillwind Yeti in my opening hand because it's one of the best cards in my deck, and when I'm on the draw, I can actually just ramp into it, so... Yeah, I think I think keeping Chillwin Yeti is nearly a must in this kind of deck because it's so unlikely that I'm gonna get a real two drop anyway that I may as well just keep the good cards and hopefully I can coin four drop and play another four drop. So there is an Amani Berserker. That's gonna cause some issues. Uh, all right. Honestly, hmm. All right, I'll make a 1-1 one -one here. I only lose out on one health. Oh, actually, no, that was maybe wrong. So, okay. Hmm. I had I had some flawed logic. My reasoning was that I'm going to hit this anyway, so I'm going to take either 5 or 4 over 2 turns. But if I just didn't do that, then I would only be taking 2 because True Silver gains me life. But... Uh, oh well. So I ended up ended up losing three extra life there for no real reason. But who knows, maybe it won't matter. I mean, I've got Guardian of Kings in hand anyway, so I might go up to 30 at some point. Um, let's hope that my opponent doesn't have a very aggressive draw, or like assassinate would be really bad for me. That's pretty good for him. Yeah, especially because his hero ability... Oh, so close to being able to do that. Um, his hero ability is really good for Chillwind Yeti battles because he can just hero ability and kill my Chillwind Yeti with his face. But I do have a Silver Hand Knight, so he's gonna get to eat the bigger. Yeah, he's gonna get a two point out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That works too. Okay. Well. Might need that to bail me out at some point, but this is not looking good. He's going to have a 4-2 on board plus whatever he plays next turn, and I don't really have a great play. Ugh. So he's going to have a two four twos. Oh, okay. I thought I did not think he would do it that way, but I'm pretty happy with that situation. I mean, granted, I am losing by a lot right here. Oh, yeah, let's do this. Um, I really need to hope my opponent doesn't put a lot of pressure on the board right here. There's still some chance that I do win if Tyrion gets online before I'm actually dead. So, so playing something like a 6-7 would classify as putting a lot of pressure on the board. At least he didn't attack me. Um, but I don't think I have any other option than to do this. And honestly, even Tyrion Fordering is not going to save me here. Yep, there's the assassinate. Hit for ten. Cause I mean he can just yeah, he can just hit me with the dagger um and then eat it with that, so I don't really know how I win this one. Maybe he makes a mistake and hits with this instead. I don't know. It doesn't even matter. There's no chance that I win this one. Like the cards that are left over in my hand are not good enough to take this game. My opponent had a very good draw. So I'm not really too upset about losing this one, but I don't know. Oh wow. Oh wow. That's Swamp Ooze. Value. Sprint. Oh god. So like not only does he put more pressure on the board this turn and kills my biggest threat, he is also able to to generate some card advantage. So that's gonna be a well played <laughs> that's a well deserved victory on my opponent's part. His deck is very good. And uh that's uh that's a quick quick and swift loss, like just a beating. But it looks like after the next game, pretty much regardless of what happens, I will be rank five, so it's pretty good. Or not rank five, rank forty, I mean. 
Level 40 Paladin, man. I have like 47 level of, uh, of Druid and everything else is... Actually, I mean, it's pretty fluctuating. Like, for a while, they were all around 25. I think I was trying to keep them even, and I was only playing... Um, I was only playing Arena, but once I started playing the other thing, it, it helped out. I don't want any of these cards. Once I started playing Constructed a lot more, or Play Mode or whatever, I really started to gain... Ugh, I can't even play this on turn two. Oh, I'm totally playing this. Doesn't do anything. It's literally just discard a card. It's like bad Sinister Strike. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna hear... I'm not gonna play this out turn two. It might be nice to, like, sort of think about it, but it plays into coin... Um, SI7 Agent to a degree that I would probably just lose the game. So... I think I'm going to hold on to this guy. He's, he's going to be useful at some other point. I mean, sure, your, his hero ability is good against mine, but I don't know. I don't really care. Uh, like, at least I didn't lose value is what I'm saying. Not that <laughs> that I'm being a jerk. Me like, yeah, I don't even care. Sure, you got to kill my guy. Whatever, man. All right, so what you got now, bro? Backstab. Sure, I mean, as long as this guy's trading for a backstab. Well, no, that's not actually great for me. <laughs> And SI7 agent. And he still gets to finish me off and eat my eye for an eye. So, value. Threaten. Justice demands retribution. <laughs> Alright, so, I mean, this isn't so bad for me. I'm going to be able to get a two for one out of this true silver. So, overall, I'm just down the eye for an eye. Uh, and this is why stipulation arena is when you don't have enough choice sometimes can get a little bit ridiculous because sure it was cute when i was playing it but now it's just boring and stupid to watch it's just like okay well may as well just discard a card and, and that's basically what we're doing here i don't really know i mean i guess i get why he did what he did but it was sort of like a waste of the si7 agent backstab combo because you can either do four damage or you can do damage to two different things, but he really essentially just did two damage with those two cards. And I mean, he got to have a 3-3 three, three out, which was the real reason why he made the play, but... Alright, you got yourself a Worgen Infiltrator, my friend. I'll go ahead and take out this, uh, this guy. And this was a very good draw here. Probably one of the better ones in the deck. And yeah, I'll take that guy out. I mean, I overkill on one damage, but I get to gain some health back, or I guess gain one health, and uh, take out his, what could be a threat at some point in this game. So, right now my goal, or my intermediate goal, is to get a decent Frostwolf Warlord. Looks like it'll be a 5-5, five five, but that's still good enough here. Maybe. Yeah. Um, actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to Buzzing of Wisdom this just to cycle. Actually, no, I'm not. Well... Maybe I should. Yeah, it's not It's not going to be a while until I can get Tyrion out, so I'd rather just have access to a different card in case I need it. I know that this guy's about to die. That's not really my concern, though. So, what I'm trying to do is, like, bait out and assassinate, or, like, a, even a silence on this thing. He kind of has to kill this. So, silence wouldn't be that helpful, but... Um, the, the general idea is that he, he doesn't really have a great way of dealing with this. He can hit it, he can, yeah, he can't really do that, though, unless he has got a backstab for this. Deadly poison, sure. Another deadly poison. No coin. What is happening here? Chill one, Yeti. I still don't really, I don't know. <laughs> sure, okay. Nothing really happened that turn. Well... This is going to be good for me, right? I'm just going to do this. He did chill one, Yeti. And, I mean, there's no real point in cycling that just yet. So I'm just going to make a dude here. And then I can't draw any cards off the Divine Favor. So, um, that wasn't a great turn or set of turns for me. But, I mean, keeping this guy around, I think, is a little better than just playing the Guardian of Kings. No reason to justice him. If he had a... Okay. Well, he had that last turn. He could have just done that. That's really confusing. I don't really get why he played the Chill and Yeti over the Dark Iron Dwarf. Maybe he misclicked. He must have misclicked. Because he did say mistakes were made. He, That's got to be it. I mean, I can't really think of any other way that that makes sense. But it looks like we're going to get some advantage out of this 1-1. One, one, trading for his 2-1. Which is pretty rare when you're playing against Valera. But yeah, he can take out my Tyrion here. But I'll have 
a 5-3 left over with a ton of life and a Guardian of Kings. Ugh, God, that's bad for me. Um, depends on what he does here. Oh, it looks like he is going to trade for it. Oh, no, he can't trade for it. Oh, he screwed that up, didn't he? Okay, well, that's awesome for me. It's actually just awesome. And hand of protection. Boom. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, he, he screwed that up really badly. He should have done this, hit himself down to 16, traded with my Tyrion, and then had his own, and he would have been in a... He would have just been, like, slow walking his way home for, for a touchdown here. That would have That would have won them the game. Betrayal. Okay, I guess I screwed that up a little bit. I should have put the um, the one one in the middle, but not really that big of a deal. All right, so you're just gonna finish. Oh, that guy's big. Good thing I have this hammer of wrath still. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill Jirian, but he's at 16, and I got a 5-3 weapon. That's not bad for me, and I drew a chill yeti. My deck doesn't seem so bad when, when stuff like this happens. Honestly, playing this is probably just better than making a 1-1 here. <laughs> I mean, it, making a 1-1 isn't terrible, but... Repentance basically makes it so that there's nothing that I really have to fear. Like, this is the only situation where Repentance is good. I guess, yeah, see, look at this. I mean, <laughs> it's actually just a good card here. <laughs> Like, this could have been the first time ever that somebody conceded to a, uh, oh man, game. That somebody conceded to, what should I do? I guess, I guess I should probably kill, kill this. Conceded to a repentance. Um, I'm going upstairs here. He'll hit me with something, so I'll kill him. I'll kill him this turn. And if not, then I still have a five charge on my like there's no way I lose this game. But yeah, this was this this was an actual good situation for repentance. It's like not good, but it's the best it can ever get. But yeah, so I should have I'm I was trying to say this, but at one point I had eye for an eye or repentance in the draft, and I just thought repentance did absolutely nothing. <laughs> Justice demands retribution. Oh man. No, I missed it. Oh come on. Justice demands retribution. I should say that every time that I get eye for an eye off because it's it's the perfect statement uh, my opponent just sent me a friend request <laughs> let's see if, if they have anything interesting to say then I'll show it but um, yeah I'll, I'll probably like generally when people friend me after matches I always accept and then I generally just um, <laughs> I generally just delete them right after Ooh, he just finished an arena run. 4-3. Yeah, he screwed up that one. And then I'm just going to say, you should check out the video at youtube.com slash is die show in a few days. Happy arena in um, okay. Who are you? How do I get rid of you? Okay, um, we got a pint size summoner. Look at that. Wait, I thought I just deleted you. <laughs> Go away. No. What? No. I thought you were gone. Remove. Remove. Confirm. Okay. Ooh, chillin' Yeti. I accept. Not gonna play it this turn though. Not gonna play the pint size because I would only be able to play a three drop next turn. And he's not doing anything on turn two. I might get like Fiery War Axed here. Oh man, I wish I had coined that out. Yeah, I might get Fiery War Axed here, but if not, then I actually think I stand a good chance of winning this game. The games where I can win without all without having to play all my cards are awesome. Oh thank god. Because my deck is way worse than my opponent's deck, most likely. Oh man, if I actually had a, um, if he had played like a 2-3 or like a Harvest Golem or something like that, I could have coined out a Kodo, that would just be insane. 
turn two or turn three Kodo in not a deck that has access to Innervate. That's just sounds absurd. There's no real point in coining out the Silverhand Knight there. Oh man. I can still coin out a five drop this turn, so that's pretty good. Eye for an eye, man. It's, it's a thing. Tell your friends. Alright, so we're playing this guy for sure. And I'll probably actually I'll probably take out this guy. Uh, yeah, I'll take out this guy. Oh, this is probably just gonna trade there and then that's gonna eat there. And then I'm gonna have a 2-2 versus whatever he's got. So looks like we're not doing that well, but. I could play a Scarlet Crusader and like a Blessing of Might next turn to trade the 2-2 for whatever he plays and then I have a Scarlet Crusader gets his nothing. So, maybe. Maybe I'm not that far behind. it. Well, I'm definitely not far behind, but well, I could be far behind. I was just hoping to be very far ahead right now, unfortunately. And that doesn't work. Yeah. Alright, well, we could draw True Silver off the top. That'd be really good. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to do the play that I suggested. And then I'll probably drop a Repentance as well. Um, I can do this. And here is actually a pretty good opportunity to use Repentance, because that just means that whatever his next creature that he plays is just going to be as bad as this. He's also going to think it's Noble Sacrifice, because nobody plays Repentance, and that's going to be nice for me as well. So yeah, it's basically serving the role of what I thought the Blessing of Might would. See, look how awesome this is. I know that this is like never should come up, but it's super awesome right here. And especially since I can pretend to have a noble sacrifice to go along with it. But the reason why I didn't play the Chillwind Yeti this turn is because then it just trades for the tiger, which is obviously not ideal. I want the tiger to trade for one of the things that I have on board, either this divine shield, the squire, or the one one. Or if he hits himself in the face for five damage, I would not be upset. <laughs> Uh, and I think that that is actually one of the most likely scenarios to, c or one of the most likely things to come out of this scenario. Scenario? Scenario. Scenario. Scenarios. Is he really not going to attack with that tiger? He's going to attack with the tiger. Oh no, upgrade value. That upgrade value. Okay. Alright, I see you. Come on, hit with the tiger. Yeah! Justice demands retribution, my friend. Take five. <laughs> um, all right, so right here, I'm gonna value up this guy. Draw a card, just uber value. Trade Z's, drop a chilling Yeti. Right, so he's probably gonna wanna hit here, but he's taking another six damage to do so, but I basically incentivized him to do it just by cycling one card. The the thing with Blessing of Wisdom is that you're... Oh, oh, please no, please no, please no, yeah! Value. The thing with Blessing of Wisdom is if you just cycle it and force your opponent to make a bad decision or a decision that they didn't want to make, then you're gaining value. Char... What? Who plays charge? Jerk. Is he going upstairs? He's totally going upstairs with this. Okay, he's killing the Chillin' Yeti, and he's just clearing the board. Alright, this is good for me. He's got a, a weapon at 1. I've got a Guardian of Kings at 11 higher life, or 9 higher life than him. Both even on cards. I've got a, I've got some good ones in hand. I mean, Kodo and Consecration are awesome. Divine Favor has a possibility to be really good. If I can play it as the second thing and my opponent doesn't do too much. I don't know what he's doing this turn. Whoa there, buddy. Execute? Wow. Okay. I mean, I can I can see how that's a play. Alright, that's actually pretty scary. And he's down to only two cards in hand, so this Divine Favor is not really going to do much. Um, that's kind of sick. <laughs> Um, it's also kind of garbage, and I'm going to cycle this Divine Favor because I'm never going to get an opportunity to again, so may as well cycle it, cash it in when I can. But that was that was the greatest humility ever. I mean, not actually, but <laughs> I killed a 4-3 with it for free, pretty much. Oh god. Ravenholt Assassin. It's a good thing I still have plenty of life. Or that might actually be scary. 
Yeah, Argus not too relevant here. He's probably just going to eat that, and then I'm going to be able to either taunt up this guy or just Consecration it away, depending on what happens. So, yeah, this should be pretty good for me. Might even have lethal next turn. Still might have lethal. Even if he goes upstairs. He's... That's 8, 9... Okay, he's not going upstairs. Alright, well, probably just going to Consecration finish that off. It's not like I'm going to get a better Consecration than this. Oh yeah, play an X2. Just play a little guy. A little, little cheapo. A little cheapy McCheapers. That'd be great here. Come on, do it. Come on, Hayden. Come on. Come on, man. Do it. Nothing. Alright. That's yeah, fine with me. Um, yeah, I have nine mana here, unfortunately, so... Can't really, uh... Can't really play this, or make a 1-1 one -one first, unfortunately, but it doesn't really matter. So I could have dealt three more damage. I could have taken him to four, but that doesn't do anything. Looks like I might be able to pull this one out. There are not many... I guess he could have Whirlwind Double Execute. Dumb <laughs> Rampage. <laughs> I played my friend. Oh wow, that is a uh, a creative way to murderize yourself. I guess he didn't really need to; he could have just attacked with it. But he wanted to show me all of his. Oh no, he he had to play the inner rage. Anyway, that was awesome. Is that my sixth win? Is that really my sixth win? Oh my god. Like, <laughs> I am just actually playing cards that are just discarding cards from my hand instead. The thing is. Half of this deck is awesome. Like I got to choose and make the great disc like um, great picks and stuff. And there are probably like this deck probably would have been very very good. I think it's above. It would have been very above average if I hadn't screwed it up with the stupid stipulation. But I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess this is kind of the perfect stipulation draft. I'm just in pain and struggling figuring out. I don't know. I don't know. This is awesome, though. But just trying to figure out a way um, to make these cards good. I mean, Repentance was really good in the past couple of games. I don't want Eye for an Eye. I was like, all right, well, I got a one drop. and No, I'm not playing Eye for an Eye. I will keep my Scarlet Crusader, though. Having a three drop is very rare in this deck. I mean, there's like two three drops in the entire deck. Probably going to play that Argent Protector out for no value. He's, it's a little better than getting a 1-1. One, one. Depends on what he does here. If he plays an X2... Obviously, going or I'm gonna play it. If he plays an X3, I obviously will not play it. If he does nothing, then I probably will play it. So, is, am I gonna play it or not? Is he gonna play an X? I'm gonna play it <laughs> for sure. He's gonna play like Murloc Tide Hunter and just pew pew my guy down, but that's okay. It's very important for me to get a knife juggler off the table with my hero ability and Scarlet Crusader. I really don't want knives flying. That would be uh be a bad situation. So he coined out this thing just to get in three damage. I guess turning your coin into a sinister strike is not the worst thing to ever happen in the history of Hearthstone. But it doesn't seem good. Thanks. No! You bastard! Oh god. The horror. Alright, so we're, we're gonna have a tough time with this one, especially he's gonna be like Buzzard Unleash Hunter's Mark hashtag game. Dark Iron Dwarf. Is that necessary, my friend? Is that really necessary? Honestly, though, still not trading. Uh, not that. I wanted to do that. Because, yeah, if he hits me in the face again, then I get to trade. I am down a lot of life, but I do have Guardian of Kings in this deck. I have a couple of those, so if I get to turn 7... Oh no, not Unleash the Hounds! Why? <laughs> Why Unleash the Hounds? Alright, well, I mean, this isn't that bad. Alright, so... Uh, oh god, this is that bad! Well played! Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. I don't know, man. This was a brutal beating. If I had this on turn 4 instead of Chillwind Yeti, then I probably win this game. No, I have a chance of winning this game. As it stands, I am dead.
Justice demands retribution one last time. The last time I'll ever cast Eye for an Eye, hopefully. <laughs> but um, that was... Ooh, I get to draw another Blessing Wisdom. That was a fun game. Blood Knight on turn 3 is uh, its a tough one to beat. So that'll happen eventually. I mean, there's no reason to ever play around epics. There's no reason to like lower your... your uh, idea of how good Scarlet Crusader is. It's just its just an unfortunate thing that'll happen eventually and uh, I was going to lose to a Blood Knight. I was bound to lose to a Blood Knight deck eventually, but I almost made my money back here. Is that, that's 145, right? Doing my math right. That's pretty cool. First six wins. So let's see what kind of awesome thing we got out of this pack. We got a rare and nothing. Boo. Ooh, I already have two fell guards. I don't care. I have all of this stuff. I'm nearing my way towards. Um, no, I'm not really nearing my way towards the second legend. I have one legend um, that I can craft right now, and I'm very far away from the next one. And also, I don't really want to be buying packs because. Um, ooh, that's pretty. When next Ramus comes out soon enough, spoilers. Next video. Um, when next Ramus comes out soon, I want to be able to buy it, so I need to start grinding the arena for reals. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful day. Bye.